So welcome to the gallery part of my book, Did Tiger Take the Rain? This book was published by Green Writers Press in 2016, and I'm deeply indebted to them for trusting me in getting this book out. They did a great job. Um, I will explain when we get a little farther on where the book is going now. For time being, in the gallery, I have all the original illustrations from my book. All of these, from the pages in the book, are up on the wall in the gallery. And we'll walk through them, and I'll explain what is going on. So, this is my book, Did Tiger Take the Rain? This book here. These are the illustrations. This is obviously the cover. They're saying it's this one. Uh, then the pages go like this. So the story is about this village in, the, in Nepal, in the western part of Nepal, in an area called the Terai. Uh, the Terai is a flat area at the base of the mountains, the Himalayan mountains in, in, um, in Nepal and India. Uh, it has been uncommonly hot and dry in this village where these people are living. And the people living in the village are this girl, Kriti. Uh, in the book, she is Anjali. These are her parents. I'm writing about where she lives with her parents and her grandparents and uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, one day, a tiger comes to the village. Comes walking up to the village in the field and everybody's afraid and they run into their houses. The next image shows the people in the village, these are Ranatari people, and this is the, the kind of dress that they wear, so I'm very, very uh, true to the actual place itself. They are saying, look, it's so hot and dry here, the tiger came to the village, this must be a bad omen. It is a tiger that is angry about something, that's why it doesn't rain, the, right, the tiger took the rain. And the girls here, this is Anjali and Usha. Anjali and her friend Usha are saying, wonder why tiger is angry. Maybe we can go to the forest and ask Tiger why she's angry. So the next image shows them entering the forest, the village on the other side of the river, they enter the forest. These brave little girls going into the forest, into the jungle. Here they are in the jungle, and they're saying, oh, this is the first time we've been in the jungle. It's so peaceful and quiet in here. It's so nice here in the jungle. The jackal, in this case, is a jackal involved in this one says to the girls, what are you doing here? Girl children, why did you come to the forest? We came to ask Tiger why she took the rain. So uh, jackals, is they're talking about uh, when they walk through the forest, uh, that there used to be forest everywhere. The forest is disappearing because it's being cut. And they talk about how they depend on the forest, the animals of the forest live there, and even humans rely on the forest. So they're walking through the forest and all of a sudden the monkeys say, come with us. Tiger is approaching. You'll be safer with us up in the treetops. So the monkeys take the girls up into the trees and they say something like, the girls say, we want to know why Tiger took the rain, what happened to the, what happened to the rain. Uh, the monkey says, I'll teach you about the rain. And so the monkey is saying, it takes a cloud to rain. And um, then they go on to say it takes a forest to create a cloud because water comes from the leaves and the trees in the forest, it evaporates into the sky and becomes a cloud. In this image here, the girls are saying no forest, no rain, no cloud, no rain, no rain, no forest. So they're, they're talking about the climate cycle. Um, the monkey says, the girls say, what should we do? How can we help save the forest? So in the end, they find that uh, Tiger did not take the rain. Uh, the forests have been cut, therefore, less rain because of less evaporation of water. So the monkey gives them some seeds and they climb down with the seeds back to the village. Uh, just about ready to leave the forest, um, saying goodbye to the monkeys and the jackal, the taking the leaves, the, the seeds over to the this village where they grow seedlings and they plant these seedlings. The seedlings grow into bigger trees and in the end you see the forest, a new forest growing and it's starting to rain. 
and the animals, the tiger and the jackal and the monkeys and the birds are all happily living ever after. And the girls have little umbrellas on the other side of the river there. Here comes the rain. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Charles Norris Brown and welcome to my studio here in Bellows Falls uh, in the Exner building. Um, this is where I work, this is where I do all of my artwork now. I moved to Bellows Falls in 2016 and I love being here, I love the town, I love my studio. Um, as you can see I work with pen and ink um, and brushes here for watercolors and pencil. Uh, that's kind of my medium. Um, and uh, my book, uh, my original, my book on the, the Tiger Take the Rain, I didn't finish here, I, but I've been working on the graphic novel, which you'll see, uh, Thunder Bass, and um, most of the work for that, most of the illustrations for that have been done here in my studio, here in Bellows Falls. So I decided to add a little humor to the story, and being um, a great fan of Rudyard Kipling, The Jungle Book, I decided to take some of the characters from The Jungle Book. These are the characters, three characters, Mowgli and Baloo and Bagheera from the Jungle Book. And they're reading my book, The Tiger Take the Ring. And so they're basically saying, oh, we know about tigers. Uh, we're not that happy about the history of tigers in our village. Let's find out what this guy does know about the tiger take the ring. Did he find an answer to that? And so they say, but wait, it says Mowgli, the monkeys know where the ring went. Tiger did not take it. And everybody says, Baloo says, well, who would ever trust a monkey? So Mowgli says, let me call Charles and ask him what's going on. Charles answers the phone. Hello. Mowgli says, can you explain this cloud thing to us? Asks Mowgli. Well, it has to do with what scientists call transpiration. It's like evaporation and precipitation. Transpiration is what happens when leaves go up, give off water, and the water evaporates to the clouds or to the sky and creates a cloud. And when the cloud gets big enough, then the cloud turns into rain. So we're looking at the climate cycle of transpiration, evaporation, precipitation. So it's all based on a science, a basic uh, message about that kind of a climate cycle. So once again, says Anjali, no forest, no cloud. No cloud, no rain. No rain, no forest. And back again, no forest, no cloud. Well, I'm originally from northern Pennsylvania. I was raised in the woods of um, the hills around Warren, Pennsylvania. I went off to Penn State uh, in the 60s. This is a long time ago, all this happened. And eventually uh, ended up in Sweden where I got a PhD in anthropology and sociology. And the work that I did there in Sweden for my anthropology was done in India, or at least South Asia. Uh, Indian Nepal, and uh, got that in 1984. Um, then I stayed in that area for a number of years, um, eventually working in rainforests in Borneo, uh, doing research, and back to India in 1999. Uh, 1999, I, having been an artist my whole life, I was a high school artist, kind of the, what do they call the valedictorian artist, what do they call that? in high school, so I kept up my art. I was in art, art and architecture at Penn State in the 60s as well. Uh, so I kept up my art. I went to India in 1999 as part of a project they were starting on tiger conservation, saving the tiger in Corbett Reserve in northeast of Delhi. 
And there I had my watercolors with me and I was trying to study the skin tones of the local people because I want to do some portraits of them and got into talks about how to save the tigers. And once some, somebody from one of those villages just said to me, we are an artist, why don't you write a children's book? And so I thought then, it's like, what could be better than that? What could be better to do than writing a children's book? This is a way to reach out to the most important people, is the children, with a message, with messages that I would hope that they would um, find use of. In my case, it was has to do with conservation with loving nature, with loving the forests, and, uh, and loving the people. And I used my, my anthropology in part to write my book because, first of all, I was used to doing field work in that area. And secondly, uh, I knew the questions to ask. I knew who to look for. I knew how to arrange jeep rides and all these kind of things. And I just had the idea for this book was going to be based on what these local people uh, told me. And uh, so that's, this is how Tiger Did Tiger Take the Rain got started. Welcome to my graphic novel. This is a very different kind of technique from the, um, the book on Nepal. Uh, this is done in a graphic novel format, uh, meaning basically that it is done like this, like a comic book in different cells. They call these cells. And story uh, text in some of the cells or text over the, the heads of the people in the, in the book. Uh, so Thunder Basin is a story about a real place it is here. Uh, this is Mount Mansfield in Vermont, and this is the west flank of Mount Mansfield. And in, um, just under the chin of Mount Mansfield is this little basin that's called Thunder Basin. And I started going there in 2009, uh, mainly because I just wanted to be somewhere <clears throat> on the mountain where there weren't a lot of people, and this was a good area to go because it's kind of inaccessible. So I started going there then and uh, started taking down notes and doing watercolors and and drawings and thinking about a story. So over the years I came up with a story. The story is about this girl, we call her S. Uh, she's always on the cell phone. She takes selfies. She, they go, she goes out with her parents in the neighborhood. They live in the city. They go out with her parents in the neighborhood always on the cell phone. Um, eating, drinking, not going to bed necessarily, but always the cell phone is near her. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So my story is about what happens when Sarah is enticed to go to this area in Vermont with her father who has to go there to do some work on his computer and what happens to her in kind of graduating from the cell phone to discovering that the forest is a great place to be. So Sarah, so S and her father, I say Sarah because the original model for this was a girl named Sarah. So her father says, we're going up to Vermont. Sarah is like, or S is like, oh no, I hope there's cell phone reception there because I can't imagine being in the woods without having my cell phone. So the story centers around several characters, not just Sarah. It centers also around a coyote. And uh, the role of the coyote in this uh, book is, uh, is what the Native Americans call trickster. And I was inspired to write a book about the role trickster plays through a native Canadian friend of mine, uh, when I asked him what would it, if a, a child were to sit next to the coyote, the trickster, what would the trickster say to her? And he said that the trickster would say, this is your world, let me show you another one. And so my story is, trickster is, will show us what happens from her world and going into the other world of the forest. So here they are, they're driving up the road, she's on her cell phone in the car, she's not happy with all these trees out there. Here's headlights in, in the forest, there's a coyote silhouette. They come down this little road and the coyote runs across the road, the headlights on his face and his eyes, John runs off the road and Sarah said, S says, oh, what was that? That story then goes on and we're skipping pages here. So this next part of this shows S in the woods not being happy with anything. You know, briars are in the way, a little bird flying around her all the time. Trickster's watching. And Trickster's role in here is that he can transform himself into many different animals. So he transforms himself into a chickadee and then he's constantly flying around S. Um, and she says, Ugh, you know, this kind of thing, it just kind of bothers me. But anyway, it has a, an ulterior motive is that this is Trickster at work. 
What happens, so after she loses her cell phone, there's a series of, of parts in this book that have to do with what I call dream sequences. So after losing her cell phone, she goes through a period of three or four days of just being totally freaking out over the fact that she lost her cell phone. Uh, the father is not going to get her a new one. She's kind of forced to just be there and put up with the fact she does not have a cell phone. Things happen in her dreams that I, that is the role of Coyote once again, as Trickster comes into her dreams and induces her to step outside and see what you can find. So in this sequence here, these cells show S walking out of her cabin to the porch, sunshine, and she's on the porch, and here we are, Trickster again, transforming himself into a chipmunk. The chipmunk comes up to S on the porch, and she says, oh, what is that? A little animal over there. She's quite excited to see the little chipmunk. The first time she smiles in a long time. What is that little animal? The little animal's playing hide-and-go-seek with her. And she steps off the porch and goes looking for the chipmunk and comes to the edge of the woods, and the chipmunk can run off. So over time, S um, starts to follow Chipmunk into the woods, deeper and deeper into the woods. And start up here, this is her, uh, deeper into the woods, here's a little Chipmunk running along. And she's playing hide and go seek with a Chipmunk. Suddenly there's a deer running and she's all excited about that deer. Um, what happens is that she discovers Thunder Basin itself. And this image shows that she is in, in awe of see, seeing the mountain, the mountainside, and Thunder Basin. And at that time, the deer, the chipmunk, and the coyote kind of evolve into ravens. So the raven is taking over the role of guiding her into the basin itself, eventually. Part of that um, process of being invited into the basin includes a series of dreams, once again. Uh, this little watercolor up here will be part of the book. It's uh, one of the few that I have here that's not ink, necessarily. Uh, this is Evening Star, the star up there in the window, and she's ready to go to bed, and I think the next day is the day that she's going to go out and discover the basin itself. So she sees the, the basin, but she goes through a series of dreams to get her into the basin. She goes through a portal, what I call a portal. It becomes a magical world um, inside the Thunder Basin. Uh, for example, this image here shows what happens when she's beginning to be comfortable about being in the woods and listening to the birds and things. They're no longer irritating her, but she loves the sound of the birds singing. So just before the last day, um, this little watercolor shows what I call the evening star. There's a little star up in the window where she's getting ready to go to bed for the last night before she enters the basin. Uh, and there'll be another dream and then she'll enter the basin the next day. So. Part of her dreams and part of the role of the coyote is in this little image, just an ink drawing on paper that's mounted on board, showing coyote here and transforming himself into a deer and then the, the girl herself. This is called the shapeshifter, this drawing. The shapeshifter comes in uh, once again uh, into her dreams in the form of a chickadee, for example, and this last of the images I have here from the actual book. This shows her uh, sleeping and then waking, being wakened by the fact that the chickadee flying around and eventually she is surrounded by these chickadees. Um, here um, I have the theme of my show which is called Listen to the Wind. The chickadees are telling her, listen to the wind, it tells no lies. My story is about a child in the forest and I want to be able to finish my graphic novel uh, both using uh, the original um, kind of ink drawings but I'd like to, to take it a step further in not only in the direction of digital work on, on the, on, on the uh, graphic novel itself, but also being able to reach out to other people on what is called a Creative Commons license and to try to get other people involved in the actual execution and writing of the book itself.
So, as I noted, uh, the Tiger Take the Ring first edition hardcover it was printed by Green Riders Press in Brattleboro, Vermont, and I am deeply indebted to them for what, what they did to help me get this book out. Beautiful book. Um, I got the rights back to the book and immediately transferred the rights through a Creative Commons license to Pratam Books in India. And what Pratam Books does is that they distribute, they print and distribute books to children in India and elsewhere. Um, they have some books now being published in Africa uh, and distributed to poor children who would never ever be able to, to afford one of these books, either their libraries or their schools or them individually. And so what I want to do with my book that is being published in India under the Creative Commons license by Pratam Books now is to uh, either be able to send them money that they can use to help distribute my book and uh, even go there myself. And uh, to go there, I would be love to take my book myself and read it to the children in the villages um, and uh, pay them for the distribution and publication of other books just to help support Pratam books. Uh, I've also have some ideas about follow-up books that I could write based on Tiger um, and I've been invited back to India as well to write these books so it's uh, the next step beyond this possibly is there's raising some funds so I can um, possibly go back to India to do that. Mm -hmm.